Hello, this is Dr. Dan Kahinka. In this video, I'm going to describe the first stages of the data screening and cleaning process. If you have data that you've collected for a research project, you want to take that data and make some sense out of it, get it all organized and get it ready for analysis. In this case, I have data that I've collected for a study using SurveyMonkey and I downloaded that data. Here is the raw data and we want to make some sense out of this. Uh, as a general rule, you figure, well, if I look at this data five years from now, I want to make some sense out of it. So in this case, we have all sorts of things that we can do with it, including getting rid of, of uh, columns that have no information in them and so on. Once you have gone through that process of organizing the data, it begins to look more like this. So what have I done here? Well, first, I organized all of the items so we could read them. That way I know in the future that this is the um, the statement that the participant responded to. I also organize at first each item based on the factor that, it's, that, that it measures, so M, I, S, and A, but then I figure, well, that's still not enough detail. So rather than, let's say, I for influential, I, I actually type in influential and, and for kinship, religious, moral, and so on. Then what you can also do is, let's say you have multiple items for each one of these. So influential, there might be five items. So I would label influential one, two, three, and so on. I've done that here with the SBLS. So we have here, there are six items for the SBLS. So I have six, uh, SBLS one, two, three, four, five, and six. Also what I've done is these are the calculated factors. So I label those. Here again, selfless, authentic, and so on. And then I also enter the information for the scale that was used, which in this case was uh, Likert scale zero to four, never to always. And then also I put in the range that it helps us better understand the, uh, the, the scoring, which is totals rather than averages. And we understand that the range is in this case zero to 20. So now you can see everything makes a lot more sense compared to this. The last thing that I will, discuss, I will discuss with you is what to do with incomplete responses. Uh, what to do with perhaps if there is the same response for every item. So let's look at that. What we are doing here is improving the reliability of the responses that, that, uh, that you've collected. For example, this first row here, row eight, has all fives all the way across. Well, I know that Statistically, that is extremely unlikely because perhaps I had a reverse scored item or something of that nature. Um, so in this case, I determined that that is someone that perhaps just wanted to get the survey done. If you have the, the timing, how long it took them to complete a survey, and you look at that, and maybe it was only 10 seconds or something, well, then you also know that that's a good indication that they did not read everything. So we would get rid of that one. Another, another response that we get rid of is for 12, which it's an incomplete survey. So we are going to get rid of that one as well. Now for participant 16, there are two, two items that were not responded to. However, we have an option there. It's something called imputation. And essentially what we can do there is we can use averages and, and other techniques to other calculations basically to insert the scores. What do I mean by that? Well, imagine you have, let's say, 10 items that measure stress, and there's one of those items was not responded to. Well, if they were responding with three, 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 two, three, two, well, we can average those out, as long as they're for the same factor, and determine that there's a good chance that if they would not have missed that, they would have responded, let's say, with another three. Um, using the most common. If we want to actually do the average, I don't have it calculated here, but maybe it's 2.8 or something like that. And then so we can insert it. Uh, and that's called the imputation process. There's many great videos out there if you want to learn more details about imputation. So that is the first steps in the data screening and cleaning process that helps you prepare your data. So it looks like this. So it's all ready to go before you download it into your statistical software or use Excel for your statistics or, or whatever you choose to do.